Hi there, fourth graders. It's Miss M. Are you ready to take your first unit test? I know you are. Now remember, where it says first attempt up here and second attempt, you're going to leave those alone. Because remember, I score you out of 20 points, then you make corrections, and that's your second attempt. Then I add those scores, and then I give you uh, a percentage. Okay, I average those. Now what I want you to do is make sure you have unit one, test, form A. You're going to write your name on that line and write your date. You're also going to color in the circle. If you did this independently, that means you didn't watch the video. You can color that in. If you watch the video test guide, you're going to fill in the circle here. Okay? All right. So what I suggest you do is make sure you have your test ready. You have a pencil, a good eraser, and when you need to pause, just pause when you need to. I will read these carefully. And I will talk to you about them, but I won't give you any answers. It says write the correct answer. Number one, Anthony's family drives 659 miles from Miami to Atlanta. Then they drive another 247 miles to Nashville. How far does Anthony's family drive in all? I'm going to read it again. This time, if you need to make notes, please don't make some thinking notes. Anthony's family drives 659 miles from Miami to Atlanta. Then they drive another 247 miles to Nashville. How far does Anthony's family drive in all? Pause the recording and write your answer. All right, number two. And please show your work over here. Don't erase anything. Show all your work here. A scientist measures 3,470 milliliters of water in a beaker. He uses 2,518 milliliters of it. How much water is left in the beaker? So put yourself in that situation. You're the scientist. The scientist is going to measure 3,470 milliliters of water in a beaker. Maybe you could write something down or circle something. Then he uses 2,518 milliliters of it. Not sure what he does with all that, but he uses this much. How much does he have left? Sorry, my print job just came through, didn't it? How much water is left in the beaker? Pause the recording and mark your answer. All right, number three, complete the pattern. So study the pattern, each pattern, and then write your answer. Pause, and then we'll go on to the next one. Number four, a mining truck is loaded with 147,265 kilograms of dirt. Another 129,416 kilograms of dirt is added. What is the total mass of the dirt in the mining truck? Now you're probably asking yourself, what is this word mass? Well, that's really the weight of it. Mass is how much matter. And you learn that probably in science, I hope. So do you need to draw a picture? Do you need to circle something or underline it? I'm going to read it again. A mining truck is loaded with 147,265 kilograms of dirt. Another 129,416 kilograms of dirt is added. What is the total mass of the dirt in the mining truck? Now pause and figure out your answer. Make sure you also have labels. I'll give you a hint. Your answer should be mass for this word. How much mass? So you can put your word mass there. All right, we're ready for number five. If you need some more time, just pause the recording. Number five, the downtown location of Mike's Bikes earned $179,456 last year. So my brain tells me, you know what? I'm thinking I need to like put something here like 2014 was last year, right? 2014? Okay, do I need to circle anything? I don't know. The store's Riverside location earned $145,690. How much more 
did the downtown location earn than the Riverside location? Ooh, we're co comparing the downtown to the Riverside. Let me go back and look. The downtown location of Mike's Bikes earned $179,456 last year. I'm going to pretend that's 2014. The store's Riverside location earned $145,690. I could pretend that this one was in Sparta and this one was in Cashton, maybe. How much more did the downtown location earn than the Riverside location? So what am I going to have to do here? Because I'm comparing these two. Pause and figure out your answer. All right, let's do number six. Read and write the number in another form. Read and write the number in another form. Now, you need to read this, and then you're going to write the form. So I am actually not going to read that number. You have to figure it out. Now, remember in your math notebook, Mrs. Gabrielson made us a word list that has all the number words. So make sure you go and use your blue no notebook and look up how to spell. I want you to try to read that number. This one I will read to you, number seven. So pause, do this one, and then we'll move on to number seven. Number seven, 60,401 in standard form. Now, if you can't remember what word form or standard form is or expanded, remember at the top of the bulletin board in the front, you'll see an example. You take your headset off and walk over to the board to remind yourself. 60,401 and put that in standard form, please. This one is the number, but I want it in expanded form. I'm not going to read it because you have to read that one. Put this number, the 5, the 0, the 7, the comma, the 6, the 1, the 4. I'm not going to read it. How would you write that in an expanded form? Look at the front bulletin board to see if you can find the picture. Pause and do your answers. All right, for 9, 10, and 11. I want you to use the greater than, less than, or equal sign to make sure these two balance. Pretend they're on a scale. How are we going to make them equal? Or show me which side is heavier, which side is smaller. Greater than, less than, or equal. Fill in 9, 10, and 11. Pause as you need to. All right. Whoops. Now we're on 12 and 13. Round the number to the place value of the underlying digit. Round the number to the place value of the underlying digit. Now remember that idea, four or less, let it rest. Five or more, raise the score. Say it in your head. Four or less, let it rest. Five or more. Raise the score. You can see those numbers. One, two, three, and zero should also be there. And then we have five, six, seven, eight, nine. All right. If you remember, if I look at the number 78 and I want to round it, I have to think about where 78 is on an imaginary number line. I think about what between two tens that number falls. And then I look at my tens and I look next door and the eight tells me to do what? Remember, if I have 162, I think between what two tens, if it's the nearest 10? Well, the six is in the tens place. I look next door, what does the two tell me to do? It's the same as 158, so review that one for a few seconds. Now, let's remember this whole idea here. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger so you can see it. Oops, I just made a boo-boo there. Rounding numbers. Oops, this is, you can see a few people on my Pinterest list. Underline the digit, then look next door. If it's five or higher, add one more. If it's four or lower, drop the number and add a zero. Remember we talked about this. Round to the nearest 10. I'm going to look at my 10 digit, look next door, add a zero. Remember that whole idea. If I'm going to round to 100, this should help remind you. Let's go back to the questions. All right, 
we're going to round the number to the place value of the underlying digit. See this 4? I want you to round. If you forget what place value that is, look on your desk chart. Look on your desk and go back and rewind and look at the rounding riddles or poems that we just did. And then you have this number. What digit is this place value? Round it to the nearest digit. Remember, you got to look next door. Pause and figure it out or rewind if you have to. Let's look at 14, 15, 16, 17. Add or subtract. Add or subtract. I don't think I have to explain that. Double check your work. Don't just do it once. Maybe do an estimate to the side if that would help you to see if your number, your exact answer is reasonable. I would be okay with that. Pause the recording while you do your work. Eighteen. Solve. What does solve mean? That's right. Give me an answer. There were 2,683 books sold at a bookstore this year. There were 1,317 more books sold last year. How many books were in all were sold? I'm going to go back and read it twice because that's what good mathematicians do. There were 2,683 books sold at a bookstore this year. So I'm going to pretend that those books were sold in 2015, the year we're in right now. But there were 1,317 more books sold last year. So if I own the bookstore, that means I sold 1,317 more books in 2014 than I did this year. How many books in all were sold? Hmm, how do I figure that out? I will need to probably make a chart. Walk yourself through it. Pretend you are the bookstore owner. You could say, I had 2,683 books sold at my bookstore this year. There were 1,317 more books sold last year than I did this year. How many books in old were sold? How many books in all were sold? Pause the recording and work out your problem. 19. Centerville has a popula population, remember population is how many people are in a town or a city, of 137,600 people. Westwood's population is 62,750. How much greater is the population of Centerville than Westwood? So I'm looking at two different towns. One has a population, Centerville, of 137,600 people. Westwood's population is 62,750. How much greater is the population of Centerville than Westwood? Pause and write your answer. 20. All right, your last question is an extended response. I expect a complete sentence or sentences. Extend response. Determine whether the following statement is true or false. Explain your thinking. So I'm going to look at these two. And this says equals. Is this equation equal to this equation? Is this equation equal to this one? You're probably going to have to do some computation. And then you're going to tell me, yes, this statement is true because, or no, this statement is false because, and you tell me why. If you need further assistance, let me know. Don't forget to make sure you put your name and today's date on your quiz, and you probably hear me rolling. All right. Um, don't fill anything up here, just name and date and whether or not you listen to the video or not. I know you did a good job. Thanks for stopping by. I'm very proud of you. Keep up the good work. Give me a smile. Bye bye.